When Lu and his wife went to a restaurant, they simply wanted to enjoy their food while they had a light chat. However, everything went wrong when 16s approached them and began to mock them. The elderly veteran burst into tears and something totally unexpected happened. Veterans frequently experience discrimination and are often overlooked or treated poorly. And it looked like the same was going to happen when 16s approached the elderly Navy veteran and his wife Annette dined at Olive Garden. Lou was a proud veteran of the Vietnam War. That day, he was wearing his US Navy Vietnam veteran cap. It was a symbol of his service and dedication to his country. The couple was looking forward to a peaceful dinner until an interruption happened. They couldn't help but notice a group of six teenagers who entered the restaurant noisily. The teens burst into the Olive Garden with an energy that immediately drew attention. They were all boys, ranging in age from 18 to early 20s, and they were laughing and chattering loudly. They were a mix of heights and builds, and each of them was distinct in appearance. The tallest of them had tightly cut brown hair and a booming laugh that was loud enough to be heard across the street. Beside him were two shorter, stockier boys. One of them had a shaved head and a bold tattoo of a sword and the shield on his arm. The fourteen was quiet and seemed more observant. As soon as he walked in, the young man stood for a moment and scanned the room as if he were taking in every detail. The fifth one had a cool smile and he kept nudging the last boy, who looked very tired and he hadn't slept in days. As an ex-serviceman, Lou had always been vigilant and perceptive. He felt uneasy as the noisy teenagers took a table nearby. Their behavior quickly drew the attention of the other patrons at the diner and people started turning in their direction. But it was not just the noise that disturbed Lou. His military training had taught him to always be aware of his surroundings and spot potential threats before they could become hostile. Now Lou had the gut feeling that the teens were eyeing him and his wife. Lou decided to ignore them. He wouldn't let some mocking teens distract him from the meal he had planned with his wife. He instead focused on the smell of good food and the comfy seats they were in. Today was like an anniversary for them, and they were here to celebrate it with a simple dinner. Annette made their orders and they sat down to wait for the waiter to deliver their meals. But no matter how much Lou tried to focus on their dinner, he still felt uncomfortable. Those teenagers still seemed to be watching them. Lou was wondering what they could have up their sleeves. What if they were planning to cause trouble? His mind began to race with possibilities. These were teens, so they could be up to anything. Had they been drinking? Were they looking for a fight? Or were they just mocking him? The presence of these young men was unsettling and it made Lou annoyed. He considered it rude for young people to just stare at him for no good reason. Soon enough, Annette sensed Lou's discomfort. She gently placed her hand on his arm and tried to reassure him that it was fine. They're just kids, Lou, she whispered. For all she knew, the teens had no ill intentions or meant no disrespect. Annette knew her husband's mind was filled with memories of his time in the Navy. His service had made him hyper-conscious and aware, but Lou wasn't convinced. He had seen enough in his lifetime to know that trouble often came in unexpected forms. His experiences had shaped him into a strong, proud man, and despite his age, he wasn't about to let a group of teenagers ruin their evening. But little did Lou know that this encounter was about to take a surprising turn that would leave him profoundly moved. Ten minutes later, the teenagers' behavior grew increasingly disruptive. They laughed loudly, made exaggerated gestures, and didn't seem to mind the noise they were making. Lou could feel his patience wearing thin. He had come here for a quiet evening with Annette to enjoy a simple meal and reminisce about their lives together. Instead, he found himself dealing with what he perceived as a potential threat. Lou seemed to be right because as the meal progressed, the teenagers' actions became more focused on him. They whispered among themselves and occasionally glanced over at his table. Lou's grip tightened around his fork. He was ready to confront them if necessary. He had faced far greater dangers in his life, and he wasn't about to back down now. As if the teens had read his mind, something happened immediately. The stockiest of the teens got up and walked towards Lou's table. Lou's heart pounded in his chest as the boy came for him. He was the teen with the sword and shield tattooed on his arm. This was it, Lou thought. He was ready to defend himself and his wife if needed. Annette was quick to sense the tension. She whispered urgently to Lou and told him to please stay calm. Lou might be 74, but she knew he could unleash hell when anyone made the silly mistake of pissing him off. The boy approached with a determined look in his eyes and Lou stood up to match his gaze. He was ready for anything, a confrontation, a fight, whatever it took to protect Annette and show these teens that they couldn't get away with mocking him. Lou knew he could not take on the six young men, 
but he could still put up some resistance if things went south. When he was their age, they would have been no match for him. And Lou was right. At 18, he was already a seaman in the US Navy. As someone born to immigrant parents from Macedonia, he definitely knew when to stand firm. Lou's life was shaped by the strong values of hard work and resilience that his parents instilled in him. They didn't have much, but they managed to build a loving home. Lou's childhood was marked by a sense of duty and responsibility, and he carried these values with him throughout his life. As a teen, Lou attended Granite City High School, where he excelled in his studies. He was well-liked by all, including his teachers and his peers. It was also here that he met Annette, the love of his life. Annette was a bright, kind-hearted student, and she shared Lou's strong sense of duty. They quickly became inseparable, and as young as they were, they spent most of their time together talking about their future. However, these dreams were soon interrupted by the harsh realities of life. Unlike Annette, Lou's family didn't have the financial means to send them to college. With few options available, Lou decided to join the Navy right after graduating high school. He saw it as a way to serve his country, earn a stable income, and make a better future for himself and his family. On one hand, Annette was supportive of him. But on the other hand, she was heartbroken to see him go. When he was first shipped abroad, she stood on the dock and waved tearfully as his ship sailed away. She was very unsure of when they would ever be reunited. Lou's years of service were ones of dedication and hard work. He was designated a parachute rigger before serving as a plane captain on the aircraft carrier USS Coral Sea. It was the early years of Vietnam War and Lou's responsibilities included performing pre-flight checks on naval aircraft. This was to ensure their safe return to the ship. Lou did his work diligently and rose to the rank of petty officer second class when he earned the respect of his fellow sailors and superiors. However, Lou's service came at a cost. The long months far from home at sea took a toll on his relationship with Annette. They tried to stay connected through letters and postcards, but the distance was difficult to bear. As the war in Vietnam intensified, so did the public's opposition to it. Back home, Annette faced increasing pressure from her family and community. The anti-war sentiment was strong, and those who had served or were serving were met with hostility and disdain. So halfway through Lou's service, Annette began to distance herself from him. Her parents were staunchly against the war and they were particularly vocal in their opposition to Lou. They were disgusted by the thoughts of their daughter being with a man who had been part of such a controversial conflict. As protests against the war grew more heated, Annette's family pressured her to reconsider her relationship with Lou. When she refused to listen, her parents threatened to cut her off if she married him. When Lou was discharged from the Navy in 1963, he returned home to a cold reception. Unlike the hero's welcome given to World War II veterans, most Vietnam veterans were treated with suspicion and hostility. Lou felt the sting of this rejection deeply. He had served his country with honor, but now he found himself isolated and alone. The public protests reached a fever pitch in 1965, and it further strained his ties with Annette's family. Even though he had been discharged two years ago, her family still did not want Annette to have anything to do with him. With nowhere else to turn to, Annette was torn between her love for Lou and her family's demands. She made the heartbreaking decision to end their engagement and leave Lou three months before their wedding. Lou was left heartbroken and alone. With Annette gone, he had to start his life all over again. The first step was to financially get his life back on track. He first tried his hand at various jobs and businesses, but nothing seemed to fit. That was when he realized that his calling was in service. This time, Lou joined the police force, where he served with distinction for 32 years. His career in law enforcement provided him with the stability and sense of purpose he had been searching for since leaving the Navy. He became a detective for the Southern Illinois University Edwardsville SIUE, police force in the 1970s and later worked in court security with the U.S. Marshals Service. By the time he retired in 1996, he was proud of his service and the difference he had made in his community. During his years as a police officer, Lou met and married another woman and had a son. They built a life together and found happiness and fulfillment despite the challenges they faced. However, tragedy struck in 2009. Lou's wife passed away after more than 30 years of marriage. Lou was devastated. He struggled to cope with the loss of his partner and the mother of his son. It was during this difficult time that fate intervened in the most unexpected way. While making funeral arrangements for his wife, Lou ran into Annette at the funeral parlor. And even more shockingly, Annette was there for the same reason. Her husband had passed away just three days after Lou's wife. This was a mind-blowing coincidence. 
The shock of seeing each other after so many years was overwhelming. They both had lived full lives and experienced love and loss. Now here they were grieving in the same place. Lou and Annette found solace in each other's company and they rekindled that deep old bond that they had shared in their youth. They spent time together, comforting one another and catching up on lost time. The spark that had once united them was still there, and it wasn't long before their friendship blossomed into love once more. After 40 years apart, Lou and Annette decided to marry again. They were finally fulfilling the promise they had made to each other so long ago. Lou had come a long way from his humble beginnings as a child of poor immigrants to his distinguished service in the Navy and his long career in law enforcement. He was a symbol of duty, honor, and perseverance. And even with the cold treatment he received all those years ago as a Vietnam vet, he still wore his cap proudly. And now that some teens had been mocking him with their funny stares, he was ready to confront them. But then something unexpected happened. The teen who had come over to Lou's table stopped in front of Lou and extended his hand. Sir, he said in a respectful voice, I just wanted to thank you for your service. Lou was taken aback. This was the last thing he expected. He stared at the boy's outstretched hand in confusion. But the young man's eyes were sincere and there was no sign of mockery. Lou slowly extended his hand and shook the boy's hand. The boy continued, My friends and I noticed your cap and we wanted to express our respect for everything you've done for our country. As the teenager returned to his table, Lou sat down feeling confused but relieved. Annette squeezed his hand and smiled. She had been right all along. The teenagers meant no harm or disrespect. Lou thought that was the end of it, but how wrong he was. What happened next was beyond anything he could have imagined, and soon the old veteran would be in tears. As Lou looked closer, he noticed their distinct short haircuts. These hairstyles indicated that these were not just any teenagers. They were all military men. Lou's heart swelled with emotion at their respectful acknowledgement. He felt a connection with these young servicemen so strong that he told Annette that he was going to join them briefly at their table. When Lou sat down with the group, he had learned that they were all Marines. They were on temporary duty for schooling at Fort Leonard Wood in Missouri. The six young Marines introduced themselves as Corporal Kevin Morris, Lance Corporals Victor M. Andrade Gomez, and Elia Reynolds as well as Kevin Morris, Val Diaz, and Eric A. Morales, who were all private first class. They explained that their loudness was not out of disrespect but a result of celebration. They had all passed a particularly tough assignment. Lou was impressed by their comradeship as he listened. He found himself reminiscing about his own time in the Navy and he shared a few tales of his adventures. The young Marines listened intently as they valued the wisdom and experiences of the old veteran. After a while, Lou excused himself and returned to his table. He felt uplifted by the unexpected turn of events. He and Annette finished their meal and once they were done, they asked for the bill. That was when Lou got another surprise. The waiter approached him and as Lou reached for his wallet, the waiter shook his head. Instead of a bill, the waiter handed him a receipt. There was an unexpected message scrawled on it. There was Semper Fi on the front and Ura behind it. Lou was stunned. His meal had been paid for. He turned to the young Marines who were watching him with smiles on their faces. You didn't have to do this, he said with gratitude. As an experienced veteran, Lou knew that servicemen did not make too much. He didn't want these teens to go broke to appreciate him. So Lou went over to their table and put his arm around one of the guys. He insisted they didn't have to pay for his dinner. A simple thank you was more than enough. One of the Marines responded that it was the least they could do. They wanted to appreciate his service and sacrifices. Lou was touched by this. He remembered the mocking treatment he got when he came back from Vietnam 50 years ago. Now this young generation of servicemen were trying to appreciate him. Thank you truly, he said. But I'd like to repay your kindness someday. The young Marines wrote down their names and phone numbers for Lou. As he tucked a piece of paper into his wallet, Lou felt a sense of renewed pride. He knew he would never forget their names. As Lou and Annette prepared to leave the Olive Garden, something extraordinary happened that left all the guests in awe. The young Marines, who had already shown Lou such heartfelt respect, still wanted to give the veteran one last gesture of honor before parting ways. While one of the young men was off paying their bill, the other five walked up to Lou's table. This was the moment that brought tears to the old veteran's eyes. They filed in front of his table and stood in line. Then each Marine extended his hand to shake Lou's, one by one, but it wasn't just a handshake. Each one thanked Lou sincerely and hugged him. Once they shook and hugged him, they immediately walked to his right. It was almost like it was a parade ground. The atmosphere in the restaurant had been noisy, but it grew unusually quiet as everyone watched the Marine's conduct. After the fifth Marine shook Lou, he gave him the sharpest salute he had ever seen. After that, the Marines turned and marched out of the restaurant. Then the room got very quiet. 
Everyone was still amazed by what they had witnessed. The other diners were moved by the display. They immediately stood up and began to applaud. Lou was left in awe. He was deeply moved and the young men who had so emphatically expressed their appreciation for his service. He couldn't help but turn to Annette with wonder on his face. Annette was also deeply touched by the scene. It spoke volumes for the military. As the Marines paid Lou such respect, she thought of her son, who was a retired airman. She was pleased to know that there would be people who would thank him for his service. It was rewarding to see that the military was so strong and so polite, and she wished Lou had been treated better back when he served. As Lou and Annette left the restaurant that night, the deep sense of gratitude and respect shown by the young Marines stayed with them. And Lou did not let it end there. Just days later, the old veteran contacted the local newspaper to share his experience. He couldn't put it into words how profoundly it impacted him, and he couldn't keep the story to himself. In fact, he still teared up whenever he recounted the incident. To Lou, those young Marines were invaluable assets to their country. They were exemplary ambassadors for the Marine Corps and their nation. When the local paper reached out to the young Marines for a comment, they were surprised by their response. The Marines simply said it was the right thing to do. One of them, 21-year-old Private Diaz from Texas, modestly stated, Lou fought for us, now it's our turn. Lou Zizov's experience that evening at the Olive Garden shows us how important it is to show our appreciation for those who have served. Respect and gratitude are the least we can offer the brave men and women who risk their lives for our freedom and protection. Even a small gesture can have a profound impact and the actions of these young Marines certainly made a significant mark on this veteran's life. How have you personally shown gratitude to a veteran in your life? If not, how do you plan to do so in the future? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you for watching.